what's going on guys so a few videos back i think it was two videos back um i discussed how you can actually land a 2k a month client which sparked the question you know how to actually prepare for social media marketing meetings and a very common misconception about meetings with social media marketing or potential social media marketing clients is that you need to pitch your service right away. You know, uh, I, underst I understand where this misconception comes from with all those YouTube videos with, um, you know, like the likes of Grant Cardone and uh, you, know, you need to be constantly in sales mode, you need to be selling, etc. You know, what you need to understand is that you need to, first of all, build rapport but you just need to start asking questions to the client. So rather than pitching your service right away, ask questions first, try and get to know more about the business, try and figure out how much they are earning, if it's actually possible to even pay for your retainer, how long it's gonna take for them to see a return on investment, and how quickly you can start earning them money. Okay, so more often than not, when I have um, a meeting for social media marketing, in fact, it's almost always now, um, the meeting is either through WhatsApp, Zoom or Skype, so it's an online, uh, not a face-to-face -face meeting. So basically what I can do then is I can pull up all their social media pages, uh, their websites, etc. while on the call. What I then look at is I look at their Facebook page, I look at um, what their cover photo looks like, what their logo looks like, how many likes they've got, and then I go to page transparency, uh, the little tab on the page, and then I look at um, if they are running ads, and what the ads look like. Then I go to their website, I check if they've got the Facebook Pixel installed. I do that by using the Facebook Pixel Helper, which is a free plugin for Google Chrome. Basically, it allows you to see you know, what kind of pixels are they, um, you know, are they using on the website. Is it just a regular page view pixel or have they got a few content pixel? Then I, um, if it's a web shop, I'll add something to basket, see what happens with the pixel. Do they have an add to cart, pixel fire, etc. So I'll look at the pixel, I'll look at the Facebook ads, and then I'll look at the overall view and vibe of their Facebook page. I quickly glance over their website just to make sure that you know, if I am, let's say it's a lead generation and I am getting traffic onto the web page, that the web page and website does look, you know, up to scratch. It's not some kind of shitty WordPress website that takes ages to load. Then lastly, I just quickly glance over the Instagram page, you know, seeing what they're doing, have they got a lot of followers, etc. Okay, so Facebook page, website, and Instagram, the three things I look at. Um, I have them open in all the... You know, all the tabs on my computer, like I said, because my meetings are online, I'll either have, uh, so I'm at my desk now, my computer screen is here, I'll either have everything here or, um, and then I've um, Skype on or I'll be on my phone, which will, I'll be in front of my computer. Um, anyway, so 15 minutes before the call actually starts, I start opening up the tabs um, and make sure that everything is on do not disturb or on flight mode or anything like that. So I don't get any notifications because um, you know I, I hate it when I'm on a call and the person I'm talking with, his phone goes off or he's checking his phone, his messages, and he stops me mid-conversation because he needs to reply to a message. Now that for me is an absolute no-go, so I make sure that I do not do the same. Then when I'm, when I'm actually on the call and I'm talking to the business owner, um, obviously the first two, three minutes, you know, just a very informal chat. Um, if the company or business is outside of UK or Europe, then I'll ask them, you know, I know exactly what time it is because I look at stuff like that uh, beforehand, but I'll just, you know, casually ask, no, what time is it for you? Have you had a good day so far? How are you? Yes, blah, 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 you know, thanks for asking. And then I basically take control of the meeting right away. I, um, you know, say, okay, well, I've looked at your website. Um, let's say, for example, it's Apple. Okay, I've looked at your Apple website and um, I've noticed that blah, blah, blah. And then I'll start mentioning all the things that I've found. So I've, I've looked at the cover photo, I've looked at the website, I've looked at the Facebook pixel. You know, I'll start mentioning all the things that I have noticed. Whether that is good or bad, I don't really, you know, it doesn't really matter. It's just um, to show the clients that I have done a bit of research, I've done my homework, and then I'll ask them, you know, can you tell me a little bit more about your business? Now, if this client or business owner starts to try and take control of the meeting, so he starts firing questions back at me, I immediately say, okay, listen, um, in a friendly way, obviously, this is how the call is going to go. Um, I am basically going to ask you some questions about your business. And if I think um, that I can help you, then I will explain what I do. And then we can see if it's a right fit for each other. And then we can move forward from there. Okay, so that's a very polite way of saying, listen, I am in control of this meeting. So don't try and fire questions at me first. Okay, because 
The goal of the meeting is not to pitch my service. The goal of the meeting is not to explain what I do. The goal of the meeting is to try and find out what his problem is, how much money he's got, and how much he's willing to pay for me to solve his problem. Okay, and then um, as soon as I am back in control of the meeting, I ask him questions like, okay, well, how big is your business? You know, are you the actual owner? Um, is there, are there any other co-founders, anyone else with shares? Um, you know, how many employees have you got? Why? Because I need to figure out if he's got, um, you know, if he can basically afford a retainer of 1,000, 1,500 or 2,000 plus a month. Okay, from there, I base, if it's not 100% clear because obviously with service-based businesses, um, it's not always exactly, you know, in black and white what they are actually selling. So if it's a service-based business, I'll ask them, you know, what is it exactly that you are selling? What is it that you are offering the customer? Is it B2B? Is it B2C? Blah, blah, blah. How are you pricing that? What does your ideal customer look like? Um, you know, how do people buy your products? Why do people buy your products? what makes your product or service different from all the others, um, which is an, another um, what just um, you know sprang to mind, is that I also look at their competitors. So let's say, for example, um, you know this is a meeting with Apple. I look at Samsung. I look at how their website, how their ads are running. Why? Because then I can use that as a reference point or benchmark um, you know, on the call. So I can say, well, listen, um, you know, you've recently brought out the new iPhone, whatever and Samsung have actually promoted this in such and such a way or they have changed their cover photo to this or their ads are tailored towards this and then they can basically see what the um, the cost of inaction is basically so if they do not change the way things are going with their current social media campaigns or you know they're not running ads or whatever they are basically leaving money on the table and they will realize that if you show what the competitors or direct uh, competitors are doing Okay, so the, what, what we're basically trying to establish now is how much money they have got, can they afford us and make sure that they understand the necessity of what we are trying to offer. Okay, so like the cost of inaction, the cost of not, um, not taking us on as an agency. Okay, so basically you just need to gather all this as data and then what I do is I transition into the pitch either later on the conversation or I'll just ask as much questions as possible until he comes back with me at the end of all these questions saying, you know, uh, okay, this sounds good, you know, what what do you actually do or how do you price your services, etc. As soon as he says price your services, or if he starts mentioning the price, you know he is interested because the only reason why he wants to know how much you cost is because he wants to know, you know, is he, can he actually afford your service? And then explain, okay, well, listen, you know, we are a social media agency, we help businesses, um, generate more leads, generate more sales. Again, I tailor that towards the, the company or the client. And I basically say, you know, we do that by leveraging Facebook ads. We have uh, two offices, one in the UK, one in the Netherlands, um, which is true essentially, you know, uh, my business partner Bradley has a home office. I have a home office. So, you know, I just say we have two offices, one in the UK, one in the Netherlands. We have a team that works remotely, again, which is true as well. We have, um, you know, I think in total now with 10 of us, uh, eight freelancers, me and Bradley are both co-founders. So we're a team of 10 and, you know, we uh, stay in contact through a virtual platform called Slack. And then uh, from there, you know, I, I if they mention, if they want to know the price, because I do not mention the price before they ask me, um, as soon as they, you know, they ask about the price, I say, okay, for complete Facebook advertising, and then I basically stack all the value that I can give. So for uh, creating custom audiences, for creating look like audience, creating all the campaigns from scratch. Okay, guys, my camera just died there. Uh, but yeah, so basically I will stack all the value. I'll name everything that we can do for the business. And then depending on how uh, willing this guy or girl is to work with us, I will close in a different way. So, um, if I know this client is on the edge, he wants to do this, um, basically I'll say, and we can do this for a fixed price of 1,500 uh, pounds a month, excluding the ad budget. Uh, the ad budget is up to you. We recommend uh, 1,500 a month to start with. The only thing we require from you is a 90 day commitment. And then I shut up, okay? I do not say a word until this client um, replies. Okay, so I don't, add more or say oh you know we can do you know i listen I just absolutely quiet silence and that silence can literally last like 20 30 seconds and in that time the the client or the potential business or a potential client um he you know is trying to think you know does he want this does he need this service and because of the silence he 
feels like he feels obliged to give you a reply and more often than not uh, like I said, if this client is on the verge, that is the point where you say, okay, let's do it, you know, what's the next step? And then I say, okay, um, you know, I've got a contract, we've got an invoice, blah, 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 we've got an onboarding system. I'll send everything over to you via email now. And then I'll keep him on a call until I know that he has actually received that email. If the client is um, like still a bit hesitant, I will say everything I just mentioned, you know, about the 15 euros a month. And then I'll say, how how soon? So instead of the silence, I'll say, how soon are you looking to get started? Why? Because basically, uh, if he replies to how soon you get started, he's mentally already overcome the hurdle of um, the price. And he's then thinking, okay, well, I basically need this right now. So then you'll, you'll basically um, forget about the price for a second. You'll, you'll sort of subconsciously accept the price and then reply with you know the answer that you've asked with at last you've asked last uh, which is how soon he wants to get started okay and that is basically how i prepare for the meeting and how i take and um, the sales calls i uh, hope you got something out of this hope this was viable um, i know that when starting out i had no idea what to say so a, a bit of structure really really helped me uh, like the video if you got something out of it comment down below what you'd like to see from my channel next also the first link in my description box is basically a free lifestyle design community where we can connect with like-minded people uh, and like I said completely free, no strings attached, it's a Facebook page, um, lots of cool people in there, you know, we chat on a regular basis, so make sure, you know, if you like what you see, if you like the channel, uh, that you, you know, sign up for that, um, I approve everyone, unless, you know, uh, you're, you're a fake page or a bot or anything like that, but anyway, uh, guys, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.